Hello, I'm Mentrilisim, and welcome to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 Monks and Mystics, which is the latest DLC from Paradox, which allows you to basically join like secret societies and also worship the devil, uh, which we are totally going to do. Not because it's particularly good for our life expectancy in a generally Catholic world, but because it's kind of cool. Not good for your health, though. Uh, so, in terms of Crusader Kings 2, if you, those of you who don't know it, it is basically an RPG grand strategy where instead of playing as an entire nation, you play as the leader of that nation, if you choose to play as a leader. I mean, you can play as like a, a vassal or a barony or a count or something and have someone in charge of you. But the point is you play as a character who has control of a land. And then you can try and marry and get descendants and then do the whole thing as if you were a person rather than an omnipresent force controlling an entire nation. Uh, in terms of have I played it, yeah, I have. I played it, in fact, it was my first Paradox Grand Strategy game that I played uh, ages ago, before I had a YouTube channel. Uh, and I played the hell out of it. The problem is I haven't played it very much in the intervening years, almost at all. So, I will be playing a beginner game on this one. And feel free, by the way, to shout at me in terms of, uh, you know, any good tips you've got or, you know ideas or whatever, you know, just chuck them in the comments and I'm definitely up for looking at them. We're going to start a high middle ages game, mainly because it's kind of the default, and we are going to play the totally ridiculously easy, and by that I mean, it it's not necessarily the easiest, but it's certainly fairly easy and covers all the bases, which is the King of Lyon, King Alfonso of Lyon. The reason that him he is a, an interesting character is because the Kingdom of Galicia and the Kingdom of Castile nearby all have people in charge who happen to be my brother. Um, two brothers, in fact. And if I say, kill the King of Castile, I inherit it. And then, if I kill the King of Galicia, I inherit that. Because I'm the middle brother. So, Castile is the older brother, kill him, I inherit. Then kill Galicia, I inherit. Uh, it's also got a load of uh, Muslim nations nearby who will be constantly holy warring with, I imagine. And we can try and kick them out. Not that that's actually gonna happen. But we can try it. And it's also got fun things like France and the Pope. Everybody loves the Pope. I'm totally going to be heretic. It might end very quick, this YouTube series, but hey-ho. I'm sure we'll learn things. Uh, so, let's play. We're going to be King Alfonso. Uh, in terms of the settings here, by the way, like all the different DLCs and options you can have, we're going to go for more random rather than historical, just because I kind of like the way alternate histories play out. So we've got a random Mongol invasion. Uh, major epidemic is dynamic rather than historical. Definitely having monks and mystics on. Uh, there is one thing that I have turned off, which is Sunset Invasion, which is the kind of ahistorical Aztec invasion of medieval Europe, as if the Aztecs had, you know, guns and ocean-going vessels and cannons, and then they come and invade Europe, which can happen with one of the DLCs. I've turned it off mainly because that's a little bit too random, and also can be just a thing that goes, yeah, the game, you were planning all these things, and suddenly Aztecs! One other small change I've made is I've gone release prisoners after punishment off. Because, honestly, if you torture someone, you should go, right, I torture you. Wait, why have you been released? You should be able to be like, no, 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 no. I'm torturing you. I want to keep you for more torture. Or I want to throw you in the oubliette. I love the word oubliette. Oubliette. It's just a nice word. Uh, but I don't really fancy them just going, yeah, you tortured them, so it's only fair if you release them. I don't really care about the fairness of that. I care about the, yeah. I'm an evil, evil tyrant. If I want to torture you, I damn well want to keep you in prison afterwards unless I say so. So I've turned that off. We're just going to start the game right up. I'm not going to play a custom nation or anything fancy. I just want to be able to dive straight in and start murdering my brothers because everybody loves a king's sight. I've seen this screen like a million times. Could you go away? Thank you, screen. Bye. So, this is us, the Kingdom of Leon. King Alfonso. We are 26 year old, unmarried men. Uh, our heir is currently our brother, King of Castile, who we totally need to kill, by the way, uh, before he gets a wife or a child. In fact, I might as well just straight up be like, yeah, we should murder him. So this is like the whole choose a plot thing. We are totally choosing the plot to kill him. Initial plot power of just us is about 60%. As the game starts, we'll see that increase. Um... Ooh. The world is so much larger of the DLCs. They added, like, India and stuff. Uh, alright. So, who are we going to marry? This is a big decision. We're unmarried. We don't have an heir. I mean, a, an heir of our dynasty. If we have an heir outside of our dynasty... In fact, I think you are our dynasty. 
just because of the... I might end up playing as you. Yeah, I think I would, because technically we're the same family. Hmm. If we die, that'd be fine. Uh, but ideally, I want to have a son. I don't think my laws currently allow me to have a daughter and let her inherit. Unless she's maybe the only descendant? Hmm. So we need to get married, and then we need to pump out children. I mean, you can pump out children without being married. It's a little bit more awkward. Be like, yeah, so, um, this, uh... And, you know... I generally try to keep the swearing down on the channel, but this is historical, and it's a technical term. This bastard here, yeah, they're, they're going to be in charge of the country when I'm gone. Is that okay? Because all of the counts and stuff are going to be like, no, or yeah, totally fine. And then I'm totally going to uh, rise up against you because your bastard won't have a particularly good claim. And I'm going to be like, yeah, that's not great. So we need to get married. Now, in terms of getting married, there's a couple of choices. There's some choices around here from, like, I think I've got my cousin has a claim. Marrying a cousin technically could result in inbreeding, by the way. It's a possibility. But hey, you know, sometimes it's worth it. Yes, this series is also going to be full of quotes like that. Feel free to put them in the comments, they're going to be hilarious. I have an insane intrigue. Yep, I'm going to murder my brothers and they are not going to be able to see me coming. Uh, right. So as I was saying, we could marry our cousin and try and get claims, etc. We could marry someone with awesome genetic traits to try and pass them on to our children. Or, we could play the more long-term goal. Look at the King of France, King Philip of France, who is 14 years old. Aww, he's, he's sweet. We're not marrying him, he's a guy, we're a guy. That, that would be awkward, the Catholic Church really isn't on track with that at the moment. They, no. Um, but, he has a sister who is 11 years old. Now, I know what you're saying, there's a 15 year age gap. This is medieval times, that doesn't matter. When she gets to 16, we can marry her. And when we marry her, she will have a claim on France. More importantly, if we kill her brother off, which is going to be difficult because he is the head of France. But if we kill her brother off, then she won't inherit because, you know, there's another brother here. And I think it goes brother, brother, sister. So she should be in line to inherit at some point. Let's have a look. If we click France, claimants... Uh, does it say in which order people are claimants? I don't think it does. Ah, oh well. The point being, the point being, that I'm pretty sure if we kill him off, he starts to inherit. We kill him off, she should inherit as the only descendant of the old king. So, we should ask her... To be we can't arrange a marriage. She's too young. She needs to be 16. There are rules about this thing. Uh, we gain 40 prestige from marrying into House Carpet. And zero from marrying the relative of a king. Well, that's a shame. The alternative is we could try and like grab a duchy or something. Um, we could like, marry a little bit lower. But I like the idea of playing the Hail Mary and trying to get France. It might not work. It really might not. But we can give it a go. Now, of course, it's a lot of assassinations we need to do. We need to, you know, kill her brother. We need to kill our brother. There's a limited time we can do this, but we'll try our best. If he gets married... Where are you? Oh, yeah, it's the easiest way to do it this way. If he gets married, then I think his wife would inherit. I think... And that would be all kinds of awkward. We could always press a claim through her if we still get it, but... A lot can change in five years while she grows up. Also, we are waiting five years for a, you know, descendant, which is not great. So, we've got we've got that betrothal sorted. Uh, what else have we got? Pick an ambition. Oh, we should pick an ambition. Okay, cool. So, in terms of an ambition, we can go over here and choose a focus, and we can be like, I would like to have the war thing, which is plus three martial. I mean, I could go for seduction, which is like intrigue, infertility, and sex appeal. That's actually really tempting. Because it also would go really well with our whole, uh, we're gonna be a like, devil worshipper, let's go for the whole seduction routine or whatever. Uh, it gives us plus two intrigue, and we're gonna be using our intrigue a lot. It also gives us fertility, which is great for pumping out those children when we get them. And sex appeal also means that, you know, we can maybe have affairs or even just find court women and be like, yeah, we need a bastard. Just in case, as a fallback, you know, if the we die, um, we always have a birth child around, you know. 
Um, also, you know, they would be a claim to the throne. That would be awkward. We can just kill them off when we get a real heir. Uh, we could go theology. Nah, that doesn't go the devil worship thing. Uh, stewardship. Diplomacy. Diplomacy is not bad. Family plus 25% fertility. Health plus one. Hmm. Better relations with family members. Tempting. I'm still going to go for the, the intrigue, though. I think it's necessary. I think we need the intrigue, so we're going to go for seduction. Uh, also, because it's just funny. Picked an ambition. Set crown focus in Lyon. Okay. So we're going to set the crown focus to Lyon, which is, I believe, where we have our capital. And that means that we should get more events related around there. Special titles. A regent, we don't need one right at the moment because, well, we don't have any children for the regent to be in charge of. Court physician. That's a good idea. We do have to pay them a monthly salary. But I like the idea of having a court physician in case we die. So we want someone with a high learning. And yeah, this bishop here. You know your stuff. You're definitely be my court physician. Court dwarf, court eunuch, court jess. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to keep these people I need to bump up the relations with. Right. Let's unpause for a second and just see what happens. Uh, ruler of marriage, I should get married. I know. I'm aware. Hopefully we'll hear back about that whole betrothal thing. I don't know who decides the betrothal. Possibly the regent? Yes. Accepted. Excellent. Okay, we're getting money at the time. So we've got 95 ducats. Going up by 3.29 per month. Great. So in like... 200 months, we should be able to afford a new building somewhere in one of our provinces. That's great. Um, let's also go to society. So this is new in the Monks and Mystic thing. You can be like, hi, I'm going to join society. Um, I'm gonna... <laughs> There are some fun ones. The Benedictine Order you can join. The Dominican Order you can join. The Hermetic Society, which is much more about learning. Which is pretty cool. I mean, I totally would join that. But Lucifer's Own. You need learning at least ten. Oh, I don't have that. No. Lucifer's Own. Those who serve the great adversary hide in our midst, dedicating their depravities and perfidities to their lord, Satan. Every transgression is a hymn, every murder is a roar defiance against the word of God. Lucifer awards such dark sacraments handsomely, which are said to be gifted with unnatural lifespans and all manner of demonic powers. And because we've got the fantasy-ish options for Lucifer's own, like the whole Monk's Mystic stuff on. Yep. I'm going to show interest. So if Lucifer's own, like, get wind of this, they might recruit me. Which will be pretty cool. I did pick an ambition. Shoot. Hmm. Designated Regent of Lyon. No, I don't really want one of those. I'm fine. So, let's have a quick look at our council. Everybody on the council kind of likes me. That's good. We have three people who are pragmatists. Two who are glory hounds. A zealot as well. No malcontents. No loyalists, which is a shame. Uh, I could try and get a few more of them a little bit more on side. Like, there are people I can improve relations with for sure. Hi. I could totally, like, make a claim on your land. You're quite diplomatic and quite learned. Theology focus. Ah. Attacking other Catholics is always iffy because the Pope might be... Whoa! Okay. Uh, you, child of a mangy dog, this is a form of declaration of war. Our army shall meet on the field of battle. Well, that was quick. Hi, Shaky. Okay, uh, where are you, Shake Off? Let's go for, not opinions, 
Oh, maybe opinions would work. No, it doesn't work. I want to find who I'm at war with. Diplomatic relations. There we go. Well, we'll have to deal with that, won't we? Okay. Let's raise our troops. So, it looks like uh, there might be some sort of holy war going on with my guess. Yeah, we go. Holy war for Leon. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, let us try and raise our troops. So, uh, in Crusader Kings, you can raise your vassal levies and raise your normal levels. Your normal levies belong to you. Your vassal levies belong to, well, your vassals. Taking people away from the vassals for too long kind of annoys them. Because, you know, then they don't have people to work their farms. And it affects them. And then they get annoyed. I'm going to raise everyone. Because I kind of think they're going to have a lot of people. This is a holy war. So they're probably going to get people on the side. Are there any holy orders? No. Could get mercenaries if we need them. Don't think we will just yet. There we go. There's a thousand people. Okay, I did call a lot in, but at least we can end the war quickly. Oh, what is this? Offer to join war. Yeah, I'll accept your offer to join war. Thank you, brother. That's very kind of you. There we go, 5,000. Right, looks like they're coming for me, but if they do, my ally's nearby, and I should have a defensive bonus, because I have hills. Please don't lose. Oh, let's look how the battle's going. Okay, so we seem to have lost this entire wing. However, they've lost both of these. In fact, did I ever have anyone here? Yeah, I must have. They must have retreated already. You are retreating. Oh, you're retreating. Actually, my own... Yeah, that belongs to me, King Alfonso. I'm actually retreating. And these two are fighting out. Oh, no, no, we're all retreating now. No! And they're pursuing me. Okay, I've taken some horrific losses there. And my ally is just going straight into their lands. I guess that works. Maybe. Put pressure on them. Either way, the victory will be mine. At some point. Right, let's have a look at this plot. So, anyone want to join the plot? One person might. Uh, I mean, I guess he hasn't had a chance to piss people off since the game has just started, but still. What about you? Let's change plots and see if, like, people actually want to kill you. No. Okay, we'll go back to this. And I'm going to auto-invite people. Meantime, we should probably raise some more vassal levies, but there's not many more to raise. I guess we'll just speed up time now. I just hope we can put like together a coherent force. So we've got a 10, a 10, and I'm 7. Like I'm definitely going to go into battle. Oh, actually, maybe I shouldn't go into battle. If I die, hmm. Flane, Moyo. There we go, Gonzo, you can have that. All right, we'll get together in Zamora, that way we're nearby. We could, like, get some mercenaries, but they're really expensive, and quite frankly, actually, I can't afford them. There's not really anyone to... Oh, oh, you're joining me. Please, this is going to be amazing. Yes, go, go, go. We outnumber them two to one. Okay, let's actually slow down a little bit and watch this. So, it's the archery phase where, like, archers are shooting. Oh, general skirmish. We've broken their center. That's great, which means that over here we're now shooting... That, they died really quick. Oh. They're shattered as well. Everyone's attacking that flank. And it's now just down to the light cavalry to try and run down the people we've managed to break. How many of them will survive? We've 
got a good number of them. Let's pursue. Just trying to destroy the remains of their army before it can really get anywhere. Come here. We should probably increase town again. <laughs> king Garcia of Galicia died of an infected wound. <gasps> Which means that the King of Castile has taken a... Oh, oh, that was really useful. So he got involved in my battle. He got wounded and then he died of an infection. So now I just need to kill you. Because you were my younger brother. And you are my older brother. So the older brother gets the title when the younger brother dies. Which is why I was trying to take you out first. Okay. Anyone else I could get to, like, join me? 12%. Okay, let's send you a gift. 15 ducats? Sure. It's worthwhile to get you on board. 6%? Eh, less so. And then some fours. Need to save my money. Oh, you've left me. Okay, fine. Be that way. Try and take them on before they can, like, get their morale back up. Uh, the Kaiser of the Holy Roman Empire has set a Pope Ferdinand as anti-pope named Pope Alexander. Oh. There is an anti-pope now. Anti-pope. Gonna be the very best. The best Pope there ever was. Bum, bum, bum. Gonna defeat all the Turks and slave them to my cause. Holy war. There we go. Now victory. We're gonna keep chasing them down. I don't fancy them actually regrouping and doing damage to me because although they are now half my strength, they can still do some damage. Plus, I'm getting war score every time. And glory. Glory to me. Oh, it looks like you've got your own war going on. Which is why you're leaving my war. Oh, fine. Be that way. You did get dragged in, yeah. So you've had to honor your brother's call, even though you've like absorbed his land. But you've got your own war going on. Okay. Let's try and kill you quick. But that'll have to continue next episode. So, I've been at Realism. Feel free to comment down below. Let me know all your like special tactics and stuff. I'm probably only record like a couple more videos before I start looking at the feedback. So I won't record too far ahead. But let me know uh, little tactics and stuff that I should use, uh, little things I should go for, um, what you're looking forward to, and especially feedback on things like Crusader Kings on my channel. Like, do you want to see more? Do you want to see less? Do you want to see lots of this Let's Play? Do you want to see another Let's Play? Do you want to see a different country, different time? Or really, do you want me to just continue this Let's Play? Because quite frankly, that's the stuff I'm looking for, special in a new game on the channel. I know I'm terrible. I'm sorry. I'm still getting back to grips with it. It's one of these interesting games. Cru Crusader Kings is grand strategy, and they are slow to get to grips with. So I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who are super competent having played like 200 hours. I mean, I've played 200 hours, but that was about six years ago. Well, five. I guess it's five years old now. Until next time, like, subscribe, comment down below, and of course, stay shiny.